Welcome to this GIFWorks video. My name is Jonathan Lehman and this is the second video in a three-part video series on the power of smart lists. In the first video as part of this video series, I defined a smart list explaining what it is and what it's not and also showed how to create the various types of smart lists that are available within GIFWorks. In this particular video, I'm going to show the many areas within GIFWorks that smart lists can be used and how powerful that can be. So let's get started. I'm going to sign into GIFWorks. I'm going to click on the smart list option on my toolbar. It takes me to the main landing page where many of the smart list activities can be initiated. I'm going to click on view all smart list. I'm going to view a smart list called donors who gave last year. Now if you remember when you define a smart list within GIFWorks, you not only define the criteria or the rules that determine what donations or pledges or, or, or donors are included in that smart list, you also define um, some more visual information such as what columns will be included when you view that smart list and how that smart list will be sorted and so forth. When we're talking about how uh, smart lists are used within other functionality within GIFWorks such as we're going to review how they can be used within mailings, how they can be used within reportings and some uh, reporting in some other areas. Uh, the visual information is not important in those cases. And I'm going I'm to demonstrate that. So for instance, if I'm viewing this smart list donors who gave last year, you notice that there's eight donors in this smart list. You'll notice that I, you know, there's some columns that have been specified uh, for wh what's been included. But when I click send mail, I have an option here with my smart list. I click send mail. I can click send. I can choose send mail to these donors. The important part is it's going to initiate a mailing, and it's going to it's going to start. It's going to load the recipient list with the eight donors that were included in that smart list. So the columns that were included are not relevant. It doesn't impact what columns display here on my mailing. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, impact the way the recipient list is sorted. So in most of these cases, such as with mailings and reports, um, the smart list is just used as a way of filtering or, or defining the list of either donors, donations, or pledges that would be included with that particular process. I can also um, if I view smart list and I would go to a donation smart list so I could um, say um, do my all my unacknowledged donations I could initiate a mail mailing for that and I could either send mail to these donors which would populate my it would start a donor mailing and populate my donor uh, mailing recipient list based on the donors that are represented in a smart list or I could send mail for these donations which would I just started a donation mailing list and would populate the donation mailing list based on the donations that are in the smart list. So if I send mail to these donors, click next, you'll see that the list that I include, this list would include all the donors that were represented in those donation smart lists. Most of these, mo for most of these areas that we're going to be talking about, this functionality can either be initiated from a smart list directly by taking an option while you're viewing the smart list, or they can be they can be initiated from that particular functional area. So it's in this case, since we're dealing with mailings, I could either send mail, or I could print labels or print envelopes, and when I do that, I could do it uh, to a list. And when I do it to a list, I can choose smart list. And for instance, I could do a pledge mailing. I could say, show me all the overdue pledges. And, I, and again, I get the choice of send mail for these pledges or to these donors. And in this case, I'm going to select pledges, and it's going to start a pledge mailing based on the pledges that were included in that smart list. Mailings actually can also be generated right from the smart list landing page where you can s send mail to a smart list. The same kind of functionality uh, exists with reports. So again, if I'm viewing a smart list, and I go and let me view the board member smart list. This is a smart list of all my board members. I have an option to run a report for a list. So while I'm viewing the smart list, I can actually run a report and I get a whole series of reports that I can run. I could run a donor summary report, which just includes uh, just the donors, just my board members. Or I could run, for instance, even some donation reports. I could run a donation history report and get a list, uh, I can say, uh, for all dates. And I'm going to get a donation history report. Um, but it's only going to include the donations for my board members. So you can see how I can take existing reports. And it really gives me a lot of flexibility on um, what information is included in those reports. Um, so I, I can actually, it al almost makes one report into many, many different types of reports. In this case, I can also, uh, of course, initiate those things from the report menu. So if I'm viewing a donation report and um, I'm viewing a top donation report, 
right now it default it'll default to the all donation smart list I could pick really any type of donation or, or donor or pledge smart list and then we use that to drive if I pick a um, uh, for instance a board members a donor smart list it's going to include it's going to show the top donations from my board members so I can either use donate use a donation smart list to filter the set of donations or a pledge smart list to also does uh, filter the set of, of donations that are included or a set of donors. Um, it's lots of flexibility on the types of things you can do with this. And again, you can you can initiate this either from the reports area, and you can do it for donor reports, donations for really, and, it, and whether if you have the volunteers or events add-ins, you can also initiate it from those reports. So you could run the, uh, the donors by giving level report, for instance, and Normally it runs with the with all donors, and so you. I'm going to change this to a list style. You actually get your you actually get your um, all your donors categorized by their giving levels, the way you've defined them. But again, you could you could take that and you could make a subset of that, and you could say, well, I only want to see um, that list from the donors who gave this year, for instance. So lots and lots of flexibility with um, with this. The other option that's available, which is very powerful, um, is that you can you can use a smart list. So let's go back and and we're gonna actually I'm gonna take a smart list as total current year donations greater than a thousand dollars. So I'm viewing this smart list, and I can actually use this to do what's called update items in this list. This is the way of, of so I call it sort of batch updating. So you can take based on a list of of donations or donor or donors or pledges, and update all those all those donors or donations pl or pledges. Um, that are in that smart list. So it, it allows you to change an, an attribute, change something about this. So for all the donors, I'm going to give you an example of that you can change a lot of information, or you can change a piece of information for all all of those that are in that smart list. So let me give you an example. In this case, I'm, I'm looking at this donor smart list, and I want to add all these smart list members to a group. So I pick that. It gives me a set of options that are available for a donor smart list, and I'm going to add them to the. These are donors that are given fair amount of money. I'm going to I'm going to call them my gold members. So by doing that, I'm going to add, click add to selected groups. It's going to ask me if I want to continue. We would recommend uh, uh, that you would back up your database before you take these options because um, it's going to do what you ask it to do, but perhaps you, um, uh, you, you might have, you, it might not do what you thought it was going to do. Uh, so you just want to make sure that you always have the ability to get back if, if somehow you updated it and, and, and what it wasn't what you intended it to do. So if you click next, it's going to add those. All, it's going to add all the, the the smart list members that were in that in that the donors were in that smart list. It added them to that group. So if I click any of those and I view it, you'll see that they should see now that they're in the in the uh, gold member group. I can also run that option from the settings area, from additional settings and tools and update on the items and smart list. And this gives me the complete list of options that are available. And this we continue to add to this set of options. But this gives you a list, and for instance, I could acknowledge, I could select acknowledge donations, which for this particular one, I only get a list of, of donation, a smart list, and I could uh, acknowledge all, all those donations that are unacknowledged. Maybe these are historical or something. So I could go in and I could give them um, some sort of reason. Maybe I want to get them off my unacknowledged list because they came in historically or something. And I could, I have some choices there, and I can actually go acknowledge, acknowledge those. And you click finish. And if I went back and viewed that smart list, it should be empty at this point. So you can see the powerful way that I can update lots of information based on a smart list. I can also go to the settings area and I can, I can, if I go to manage deleted records, I can delete, uh, I can delete a bunch of don donors, donations, or pledges based on the contents of a smart list. So maybe I want to go through and I have a process where I have. Uh, maybe I um, uh, set up a custom field and have someone go through and maybe marking the donors that uh, I want to delete. Or maybe there's a certain criteria. Maybe I want to go through and get rid of donations, uh, uh, old donations from a certain um, pa um, past, um, earlier than a certain uh, date. Um, so I can actually select the smart list. It's going to show me that smart list. It's going to recommend, of course, that I back up the database, which I'll do in this case. And it's showing me these four don donors. If I click de delete smart list contents, it's going to ask me to confirm it twice. And it's actually deleting those donors. So it can uh, basically a way of cl uh, cleaning up old information or historical information, or maybe, or maybe there was a uh, it could be a case of where um, 
some bad donors for import or something, you don't have a backup, and it gives you a way maybe based on date to go get rid of a bunch of donors. So there's some flexibility there. Last thing I want to show is that you also have the ability for any type of, for any smart list, such as like your pledges, you can actually export that smart list. It gives you the ability to export it to, uh, to an Excel, to a CSV or an XML. And uh, for instance, you could export it to an, uh, an Excel so that you could then, let me open that up. And, that, and then this is the one case where the columns that you selected are important because the columns that you have in your smart list are going to are going to determine the ones that are included uh, in your spreadsheet or in your XML or CSV file. So you can save that and you could use that to maybe start with a certain spreadsheet and maybe do a special type of report for the board or maybe you want to take it and use that f uh, if the XML, the CSV or the spreadsheet and use it for an, an, a third party application. A lot you can do that for any one of your smart lists. It's very flexible. We hope this video has been helpful, and we encourage you to watch the third video as part of this video series where we cover advanced features. Thank you for watching.